October 23rd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, James chapter 2 from the New Testament. My brothers and sisters, do not show prejudice if you possess faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ. For if someone comes into your assembly wearing a gold ring and fine clothing, and a poor person enters in filthy clothes, do you pay attention to the one who is finely dressed and say, You sit here in a good place, and to the poor person, You stand over there, or sit on the floor. If so, have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil motives? Listen, my dear brothers and sisters, did not God choose the poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom that he promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. Are not the rich oppressing you and dragging you into the courts? Do they not blaspheme the good name of the one you belong to? But if you fulfill the royal law as expressed in this scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing well. But if you show prejudice, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as violators. For the one who obeys the whole law but fails in one point has become guilty of all of it. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but do commit murder, you have become a violator of the law. Speak and act as those who will be judged by a law that gives freedom. For judgment is merciless for the one who has shown no mercy, but mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but does not have works? Can this kind of faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat well, but you do not give them what the body needs, what good is it? So also faith, if it does not have works, is dead being by itself. But someone will say, You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith without works, and I will show you faith by my works. You believe that God is one, well and good. Even the demons believe that and tremble with fear. But would you like evidence, you empty fellow, that faith without works is useless? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? You see that his faith was working together with his works, and his faith was perfected by works. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Now Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness, and he was called God's friend. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. And similarly, was not Rahab the prostitute also justified by works when she welcomed the messengers and sent them out by another way? For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. God, I know that there are some churches that definitely do that, that the wealthy people, the people who contribute the most to the church and stuff like that get to sit up front and um, the other people may not be sitting on the floor, but uh, they're definitely relegated to a different part of the church. But I, I really see this so clearly, especially in the social media world and in our news. We give so much power. We have we have such a hierarchy of systems. We give so much power, uh, so much of our attention and our focus to what has become idols, honestly, here in the United States and some other countries too, but definitely here in the United States. This idea of celebrity, whether it be somebody in Hollywood or a person who does sports or a famous author, famous singer, um, somebody who has taken a gift that ironically you gave them God and has used it to make it all about them and we as a society have allowed them to make it all about them you know and what James writes he's specifically talking about um, if someone comes into your assembly who's rich versus somebody who's poor but our world has changed so much since back then. Not the prejudice part, but, but how we view things. And I think we even do this in a church situation or a Christian situation to a certain extent that we give 
our attention and our focus to the famous people in church. Um, Francis Chan, uh, John Piper. Now, there's certain people out there definitely that I listen to and that I appreciate uh, their theology and I've learned so much from. And I, I think that that is good and that's healthy and that's something that you would want. But I think we take it to a whole other level when we do things like book signings or or we listen to or we say we listen to certain pastors over others be, just because of the name um, or we brag about certain pastors or certain Christian writers or singers coming to our area. It's all it's all where your heart is, which is a lot of what James is talking about. How are you actually viewing these people? How are you viewing them in light of all of us being loved by you, created by you, and there is no difference in how you feel about us. You love all of us. And yet we, we make these judgment calls. We make them constantly throughout the day. I think we make them so often that we have no idea that we're doing it most of the time because we're so used to making these judgment calls on how people look and how people talk and how what they drive and the job that they have. And yet James is really clear. Don't you understand? You're supposed to love everyone just as you love yourself. You're supposed to love everyone equally. You're not supposed to give credit to all these materialistic things and, and have a hierarchy, a ranking system, a point system on who's good and who's bad based upon how much money they have or how much money they don't have or what job they have or, or don't have. I always go back to the story of your son's birth and how here was your son, our coming Savior, Jesus Christ, and and he was a child in a manger, a dirty manger with the animals. He didn't come in in pomp and circumstance and wealth and majesty and the wealthiest family and the best of everything. He came in quietly and humbly and poorly in the sense of his family had very little money. He grew up in a household that didn't have money. Being your son, he could have chosen to become the son of anybody he wanted to. And yet he simply wanted us to understand that he was your son. And what his true calling was for coming down here on earth. I'm still not quite sure of everything involved of, of you doing that. It was such an incredibly huge sacrifice to give up everything that you had in heaven to send your son down here to live amongst us. And not even to live in a grand way amongst us, but just as a common person. I don't understand everything about how that all that worked God but I do know it came out of your incredible love for us that is so deep and so big that we will only ever be able to grasp a small amount of it and it's that small amount that we do grasp and are able to grasp that James is asking us to use in this particular uh, chapter in this book with that overwhelming pure unselfish love that you have for us we are called to love others in the same way we're supposed to love them even if they're different than us we're supposed to love them if they talk or dress or think differently than us we're supposed to love them if they have different viewpoints than us that's kind of a big one right now <laughs> when you tell us to love our neighbor it doesn't come with a bunch of clauses underneath of it but only in this case, but only in this case, but you don't have to in this case. Nope. We're supposed to love. Period. End of the story. God, strengthen our hearts to have discernment, to understand how much we judge constantly throughout the day, that we have a hierarchy system to our love, 
of who deserves our love and who doesn't deserve our love and affection and attention. Please help us understand that we're creating idols in our lives by having these unhealthy relationships with people we may, may not even know, but who we've elevated in our society. God, you are the one person who should be our sole passionate focus. You are the one who deserves all of our love. In your son's name I pray. Amen. <laughs>